Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Pet. It's time for an update on Project PP. I'm back here at Mulgari to check on the progress of the little mini convertible. I know it's been a long time since the last update. I know the project's taking much longer than planned, but all will become evident once I go inside with Darren. But I thought I'd start outside here because there's three very cool cars here that I'm gonna give you a little, just a little hint of. This has been in the background of a few videos that we've done here and the Alitalia inspired wrap is now on it. And I think that thing is looking absolutely awesome. May well have to do a video on that. This, this is my mate Michael's car. This is another Icon 2, a new Icon 2, a video coming to the channel very, very shortly. And then that, well, that's Darren's van and it's awesome. Mate! Morning, mate. How are you? <laughs> All right, chap. Good, good. Hey, now, it's been a while. It's been a long time, actually. <laughs> we've, we've, we've done so well. How did we start off a year ago? We are not going to be Project Binky. Yeah. We're catching them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't rush perfection. <laughs> so, back here at Mogari with my good mate Darren to give you an update on Project PP. Uh, much has happened. Uh, quite a lot of it hasn't been planned. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've had some we've little niggles to take care of. Some ups and some downs. Yes, yeah, it's always a roller coaster. So we are far from where we want to be. We wanted to have delivered this car a long, long time ago. But yeah. although it doesn't look like it, we're actually... We're very close, We're actually. not a billion miles away. No. Well, that's what we. You're not a billion... <laughs> I'm not paying God, any credit at all. I've gone under that bus, haven't I? All the way under it. <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about three things in this episode. Engine, seats, exhaust. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. And we will mention, so we've got the car here. Yep. It's looking very naked because Still. a lot of the bodywork is off at paint. The bodywork is in paint. It's yep. been a little delayed. I was hoping to have it here and on the car for today. It's not, it's yep. not happen. So um, it is just waiting for those pieces to come back. It yep. will suddenly not look naked when all the bodywork's on. Yeah, um, so, but it will look good. Oh yeah. So, yep. but the engine's in and dressed. But yes. the engine's been in and then out. Yeah, and yeah, it, it's I, like I, doing the okie cokey. I fancied a bit of practice at taking them in and out. No, you know, we... we <laughs> so look, basically, uh, we, we went through some of the build stuff uh, in one of the earlier videos, didn't yeah. we? And we had these forged pistons and rods and so on. Uh, and we won't go on about it too much, but there, there are set tolerances as you're building. You obviously bore your engine block out by however much you need to go out by and then match that with a piston size. And the piston then has a set of rings at the top. One is predominantly for scraping the oil back down the bore out yeah. of the way, and the top two deal with compression and holding the piston still and what have you. Yeah. And uh, there were some specification issues with those piston rings and pistons, as it turned out, which we did challenge at the point of starting to put it together. And at that time, the manufacturer were adamant they were okay. As it turned out, they weren't so okay because it started and ran as we did in an earlier video. And it's interesting because we ran it and it, it was a bit smoky. It was a little bit of smoke. And you're like, yeah. ah, it's all right. It was on its running in oil, which they, they can have a tendency to smoke a bit. But yeah. that, as we were going through our running in phase, it developed into a, I'm not very happy with the amount of smoke we're starting to see. Yeah. And I mean, it wasn't even hugely rough, but it went a bit off key. I'm not, I don't like that. I'm not happy with it. Yeah. And we had by that point changed the oil out for the correct running oil yeah so i did a bit more investigation work and finished up taking the decision to pull it back out and take it back apart so i could get into the bowels of it because it can really only come from a couple of places that smoke yeah and as soon as i was in there i mean you know i, I could tell we were in some kind of trouble so conversation with that manufacturer who then hands up said no we have made an error in both a, a batch of them where there was a ring material issue and a tolerance issue because at that point there wasn't a solution immediately i've gone back to a manufacturer who i normally use who at the time couldn't supply the bits for this anyway we've yeah. gone up a tiny bit bigger because we yeah. had to yeah and i've built it with those bits with the tolerances i normally use gone back together and it's done tons and tons of running and there's no smoke but hats off to the first uh, supplier though because they did say 
Yeah, I, and bad, initially, they, initially and kind of they, didn't, they weren't bit, aware so. of an issue, and I think as more of us were questioning and had seen some problems, they then did put their hands in the air and say, okay, look, we have got an issue. Yeah. They have covered some costs attributed to the rebuild again, yeah. uh, and obviously reimbursed for the, the faulty components. So you can't say fairer than that. No, no. I mean, things do go wrong. But So you've now bought it out even more? Slightly more. Yeah. More power? We've gone out a little bit. We've changed the compression ratio slightly as well because okay. we've done a different set of pistons in, and, and rods, actually, in this case. Because it's supercharged, you can't go too wild. So yeah. we've actually gone down slightly on compression to okay. cover off pulleys and, and what have you. So engine's in. Uh, third Behaving set, now. Th th third set of pistons. Third set of pistons. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, but when it was running in before, although the it engine was the in, it, it wasn't kind of dressed. No, it, when we hadn't finished off our intercoolers no, and this intakes is, and bits This is all crackly black here, but now yes. that, that looks It's now awesome. got all the pieces on it. It's not entirely finished yet, because you know, we are still running bits in, so there's a couple of bits, nuts and bolts to go in here yeah. and there, but nothing spectacular. Uh, and we have actually finished off going with off-the-shelf intercooler and intake system. While we were messing around trying to develop our own, Actually, we're starting to reinvent the wheel a little yeah. bit, and also time. And yeah. like, you know, we were already behind; didn't want to drag it out any longer. So we've actually chosen, in this case, AirTech combination of of, uh, of intercooler and yeah. intake over there. I love the fact it's got a, a glass window in the window top. In the top so yeah, you can it's see just it. pretty. It's, it's nice. It functions very well. It's kind of zero function, but cool aesthetic. But it just looks nice. <laughs> yeah, that that really, you could just have the filter there on its own. But the fact yeah. that, you know, the box helps to keep a bit of the heat away from it, of course, and seals it to the bulkhead where our air intake is. But the fact that you can see it as well, you can actually see if it's getting grubby, which is yeah. quite nice. Yeah. Um, so it is effectively dressed how it will be in its final phase. And then that, so that, the in yeah. intercooler there, you've now got, we've got the so real got, scoop on the front, which it was in the Gem just One cars, anyway. tiny little bit. We've got a slightly larger enhanced Ooh. carbon scoop there. Yeah. We've done away with the with the inner shroud that sits up here, which is actually a dam for the standard intercooler. But yeah. Because this is taller and bigger, we've got this additional seal around here that sits up against the bonnet and, yeah. and seals it quite nicely, and an I extra dam in the middle. Just little d details like the the, yeah. the bronze the clamps. clamps. Yeah. It's, it was and that because, strut brace is new as well. Uh, that has been on there for a while, but right. we haven't really mentioned it. But okay. yes, it is small detail. It's very similar to the GP braces. It is an aftermarket copy. It is all aluminium. Yep. It does just protects off our, our, our turret top slightly because we're quite stiff, aren't we, on, on suspension? Yep. Yeah. Cool. So a few more miles needed to put on that on yeah, the road. Yeah, a little you bit run it around on the, block, the road. Once we've got go... the, body, the, the correct body work on, that will be running further while we're finalising our suspension setup. Yep. Um, you know, the worst thing is to hand a car back freshly built with zero miles and expect the client to understand how to run it in. So it yep. has done a lot of sitting here idling and high RPMs and stuff to help that break-in process. It's now cool. got the correct oil in it again, so we're back effectively where we were before we had to build it the second time. <laughs> um, but it's, it's nice, it's sweet, it's quiet, the exhaust note's nice, and you can actually hear it today properly because Amazing. you couldn't before. Um, and obviously whilst we're around there, we can have a little nose at the alteration at the back, which is 90% finished or tacked in place. All right, we're gonna talk exhaust next then. Yeah, we might as well. Yeah. Should we do it? Yeah. Yay. It's looking very cool, that. And you got your signature Mogari. Yeah, we got our little bit of uh, cool. redeveloped by. Very cool. Twice. <laughs> Shiny bits. Mate, honestly, that is proper. It's, it's a bit cleaner. It's just a shame with exhaust, because they're under the car, you never, you never see them. Yeah. But yeah. That, that really does look. So, again, if you're not a mini, I'm sure most people watching this are probably, probably kind mini of fans. Mi mini, either mini fans or mini uh, experienced and knowledgeable. Yes. <clears throat> this car's exhaust came out here <laughs> in the middle, yeah. like two two pipes coming yeah. out there. Two little pieces. And there was a big um, silencer thing here. Yeah, they and have a big stuff. pair of bigger silencers here, and yeah, yeah, they tuck in, go through two ninety degree corners to get out the centre. And now it comes <clears throat> down here and splits here, yeah. and we've got the world's only twin exit, twin exit Gem One Mini. <laughs> I'm sure, no, a gentleman did let me know that he had tried the same thing. Oh. Uh, I couldn't tell you where from. Okay, the second, the second, we'll go with the second. Yeah, yeah, one, how about yeah. one of the worlds only? Yeah, he won't have these tips. No, there we go, right, and it won't be nearly as cool as that. <laughs> that is gonna look epic. Now, clearly, on the back of the car, 
there's a bumper yeah, and a, a big missing. diffuser and stuff. And in the last episode, we kind of saw the work you were starting to do that in terms of where you were going to have Place holes everything. for these to come out and stuff. Yeah, they're all, awesome, they're all cut the and done, and obviously because that's over at paint. Yeah. Um, we've kept it quite tight around here, so there's not like a massive hole, um, kind of intentionally. And it's hard, probably hard to see on the camera, but these are slash cut tips. We've used the slash at a different angle to try and keep it uh, right. all yeah, in yeah. line with the diffuser panel. So and then you have a nice like big chunky diffuser in. underneath there. Yeah, so you won't see any of that really other than just the very tip. <clears throat> then the other bits, Darren's very good at doing extra things you don't really spot and you don't talk about. So when we had the, we've had the car up, I've just walked underneath it. There's lots of new looking bits yeah. that you haven't told me about before. Yeah. So is that, are these bits new here no, these, or are they just been tidied up? These are up? the original Cabriolet floor braces. Right. Obviously Cabriolet missing a roof yeah. means there's some tension oh, in the chassis yeah. missing. So the Cabriolet models all have this three, four piece additional, which you can, oh, incidentally people, if you're building a track car, see if you can get hold of one of these. It's really good for stiffening the chassis. Yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, we have, we've taken it off at various points, changed the exhaust and what have you. So we've cleaned it up and painted it because yes. it, they do rust quite a lot. It's very nice. Um, and then right at the front, nice, really. the wishbones at the bottom of the suspension, they're new. Lower wishbones are brand new. Uh, the old ones were not only scruffy, but because the whole front suspension's been replaced, it, putting scruffy, dirty old bits back on, it, it does my head in. Right. Um, but we've, uh, along with it, we have different inner ball joints, which was all part of the PowerFlex alteration yeah. and the roll center adjusters and stuff, which we'll cover properly when we do our yeah, yeah. suspension setup bit. But pretty much everything on the suspension front end, particularly is brand, brand new, obviously along with the bushes. The rear end, it's all just being cleaned up and painted and then bushed. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot else back here, really. Mate, this looks proper. Yeah. Do you know what we've got to do now? Tech stuff. We need to bring it down and start it, it down out. And start out. Shall we? Yeah. Shall we do it? Let's do it. <laughs> oh, <that's> awesome. <laughs> right, I'm going to come on camera now. He's off camera that way. Go on then, son. <laughs> oh, yeah. That sounds proper, that. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too awful. Blowing all the shit out the back of it. <laughs> you know what we were saying about the no smoke thing? <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. <coughs> that sounds really, really good. Not right, bad, is it? should we do seats now? Yeah, let's do interior. Now then, my friend, there are many bits of this build that excite me. Yes. And that interest me. The interior, though, I think, I think the whole car is going to be special, but the interior what we're doing on the interior... Bit. And I think for lots of people, lots of people are likely to maybe take a car and rebuild an engine or mm -hmm. tune it or yeah. put different brakes on it or, or drop the suspension or wheels, or whatever. Yeah. To fully customise the interior of a car, that's something that you it's don't bit, do bit that often. A bit more specialist, you don't do it often. <laughs> no. I mean, most vehicles out of factory, especially when you order a, a highly specced car, the interior is quite a nice place to be, leather and bits and pieces. But yeah. of course, in, in the custom car world, every car would be the same otherwise. Yeah. So you can take a, a Mini, in our case, and yeah. we know because we're doing a faster road car, the front seats, which this is a lounge leather car, so they're nice, but they don't hug you very well. Yeah. You can start to, okay, we've got some alternatives for some more sports-based seats, but of course you've got to try and make that match the rest of the car. So you start looking at other areas where you can add a different finish or a different material, make it feel more premium and you put it all together, you know, you can end up with quite a nice, quite a nice finish. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure many of you have nearly done it with my roaster, is just put a new set of driver's seats in. Yeah. And there's loads, you know, we're working with Cobra and there's loads of seat lots manufacturers lots of options, out there. Yeah. And they'll have off-the-shelf stuff that yeah. is made for that particular type of car. Yes. You buy them, you stick them on the sliders and that, yeah. off you go. And, and in a way, some of what we want to do, we were going to do that, but then mm. we were thrown a bit of a curveball by John, the owner, because this car has... Uh, a dark blue leather interior yeah. and John really likes it and yeah. wants to keep it. Wants to keep the blue theme along with the blue hood and everything else yeah. which actually in hindsight you, you were tend, against it to start with. I but, agree but with no, him yeah. because actually the blue is a less common option so yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I have to say having digested it a little more since that conversation I, yeah. I, I think he's right I think it's the right way to yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately <laughs> Cobra <laughs> 
Don't make oh, a don't make yeah. a seat in that colour, do they? No, but we had it all planned with black and yeah. But look, I, I, curveball's a curveball. So, so John is the client. We'll do what he wants. And, yeah, and actually, hey, I think he's right on this occasion. Ab absolutely. So um, um, the, there's a there's we can't do everything today because one of the things about the interior is we're waiting for all the paint to be done and everything else to be done. And then it done, goes to the trimmer. And then it goes to the trimmer. Yeah, I can't sew. Um, so. No, no. <laughs> so there's so much detail. The, the, uh, Darren ran me through the plans for the interior and that, there's a video just on that on its own. There's yeah, so, there's, you're there's thinking about all the little things and yeah. I, I think that's going to make it a really special place. Of course. But what, what we thought we'd do in this video is talk about this because this is probably a view you haven't seen very often, unless you've yeah. been to a car factory and seen how seats are made. Correct. Um, you might well have seen the seat. So you've got the frame and then the padding, but over, obviously what goes on over that the is- the that you see and you sit the, on and the you nice touch and you feel. Bits, right? but these are kind of interesting as well because, uh, because the car in factory spec had uh, heated seats uh, and not many of the aftermarket seat manufacturers offer that as an option. Yeah. Cobra, who have been quite smart about it, have decided, particularly with this seat, which is their Nagaro, granted there's no covers on it, that we can add seat heating to these and lumbar support. Right, okay. Uh, I thought that so, was going to test me blood pressure. No, no, not, not this time. <laughs> yeah. um, and it just, this is an opportunity without the covers on to show people what a seat looks like inside, yeah, yeah. The, the way it's constructed. And actually in this case, we're also adding retrofitted heating, yeah. which if your car hasn't got heated seats and you wanted say a set of Cobra seats in there with the heating, they also do, which I've strategically left beside you, uh, a retrofit harness. So you can add heated seats to your car with that yep. harness. All you need is a power supply and a ground. Um, and you wire that into this seat and that gives you a, a two-stage seat heating sort of element buttons, within the seat. So very much like your factory integrated system, but for cars that don't already come equipped with it. Yeah. So we haven't got, got to worry about a it. Switch so the I'm going to make that seat work with those switches. Of course you are, mate. Well, because it's got to look right. It's got to look like it was done Anyone else proper. would like drill a hole in the door and plug that in. <laughs> yeah, and well, it's an option, but because the car's already got it, yeah. and I mean, we're talking about three cables here as well. It's a, it's a two-stage power and a ground. Yeah. I've just got to configure them the right way around. And in theory, they should work off the original power supply, okay. which is nice. So under here then? Yes, so let me remove the front so knee pad out of the way right. first. And if you... If you pick the seat base up. Oh man, it's like an under, it's like, you know, if you've got underfloor heating at home, it is just like that. Lots and lots of bits of cable. There you go. There you go. Look at that. You can just about make out the heated seats elements. And, and there's one on the and back. And there's the backrest one as well. That's very cool. Yeah, so it's much like underfloor heating, as you say. Oh, and there's lumbar idea. Yeah, your lumbar is just an inflatable bag, yeah. in effect, and that is all the factory seat would have. Obviously, these all go underneath all of your trimming when you're, when you're leathering and what have you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's an, just a nice opportunity to see that, you know, that seat really is a, in this case, is a fiberglass carcass. Yeah. Which is a bit you can see from the back, really, the shiny bit. Yep. Um, beyond that, then, it's foamed, obviously, to, in order that you, you're not sitting on a hard, like a race seat, sometimes they're just bare yeah. GRP or carbon. Obviously, we're foamed in the right places, bolsters are all foamed up, and then your, your leather cover goes over the top oh, nice. of that. And obviously, you being you, Yes. You've taken the sliders out the car. No, no, I've bought universal runners. So right. the original seats over there with all the original gubbins on oh, the bottom. Oh, okay. One of the small stumbling so, blocks that we came across, which was, I think, a little bit of cross-wire situation, is that for the R56 right. Cobra do the Nagaro seat with low side, low profile side mounts, which is what these are, yep. and a subframe system to bolt it into the car and retain your forward and backward okay. adjustment. Would that fit in a roadster? Yes. <coughs> <laughs> As it turns out, they don't do one for the R5352 platform. Um, and after a bit of messing around, there's a few places that seem to think that their listing should be the same. And I kind of, I have to agree, I thought I would agree. Yeah. The actual bolt pattern is the same, but the shape of the floor is different. And this being a cabriolet, there's a sort of a subfloor in there with a big steel piece in it, which means that the subframes that I could have used from an R56 won't fit. Okay. So I've had to produce the bottom piece with a bigger clearance allowance, and then we've put basically a universal set of rails on so that you can still move them forward and backward. Cool. 
Yeah. So I and still kept them low. Because I just walked past and saw you had a Mulgari badge on there. I have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all about branding. Hey, um, hey, if you yeah, sit down for too long in this workshop, you'll you will have a sticker a on you. Oh, Gary Brad stuck on your Absolutely forehead. Absolutely right, it's got to be done. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a, that was a small oversight on, on collectively our part with, with them. I mean, I think we all assumed it was the R53 floor and the 52 floor were the same, and actually there is a difference, which we didn't know. It's quite cool, though, to learn these things well, as this, you go. We're always learning in here. You know, yeah. you find something that you, you, you... A lot of models, there's a lot of transferable bits, but in some situations, there's tiny differences, and I'm asked a lot, you know, differences between LCI and pre-LCI cars and everything else, and there are very little differences that in some situations work and some yeah. don't and yeah. uh, this was a learning day for me when i realized it wasn't gonna fit <laughs> oh no uh but it does now as you can see there's one in there Amazing. so yes uh it, it was yeah it's a nice opportunity to see a seat in a in a format that you wouldn't otherwise see it cobra do not supply these seats untrimmed by the way this is a favor to get them here in time <laughs> because otherwise we'd have been waiting thank for you cobra ages. by the way been thanks awesome. guys um <laughs> Yeah, it, it, yeah. You can't if you go on their website. You aren't going to find one of these. This is like, no. and that in a way makes this video even more well, it special. It makes it more interesting because you, you wouldn't otherwise see no. how this is pieced together. No. Um, I mean, they do do this format of seat in a couple of different ways. You can have the harness holes up here, which yeah. is their circuit version. I think yeah. I can't remember what they actually call it. Sorry. And then this is their street version, which you know we don't. We're not running harnesses, so yeah. we don't need the big holes in the top. So we keep that clean. Yeah. Which is quite nice. Um, but of course there are other versions, the Nagaro being quite popular but and quite new. Darren being Darren. Okay, so this seat's gonna be obviously clad in a lovely leather. colour of leather, which you can probably guess it's gonna, it's be, gonna be blue. Blue. Um, and then um, when we do the next video on the interior, it's not just we're not just gonna have a nice blue front seat. We're gonna have some yeah, the rears bits, the will be rears. We can't adjusted. put these in the back. <laughs> no, no. We spoke about that so at the beginning. John originally, so, far too big. so the original brief from John was, could you put buckets in the back and have like a four seat bucket, a bit like the old, um, the, the apex ring yeah. taxi with the, no, that's not happening. But we're going to try and make the rear We can play with mirror. bolster shapes yeah. to make them look like a four piece set, yeah. which is kind of what the factory do with a lot of theirs, I think, yeah. And then basically, to summarise the interior, you're going to chuck lots of leather at it, you're going to spray some bits, yeah. de-chrome some bits, yeah. keep some bits, change some bits, change and some bits and throw some bits away. Yeah, basically what he said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Make it pretty. The next video, uh, I guess the what's left, there's some obvious things. The bits are going to come back from paint. Yeah, that'll and, all and go on the car and for the last time. On the car. All built up, wings with the mesh in and all the other bits and pieces. Um, then it can go off to the trimmer, uh, trimmer and get trimmed. Yep. And then I think I'll come back and do a video at that point yep. about the interior. Yeah. But then then it's not finished. Well, there's one last phase, which is, is not me, actually. No. The chaps at Podium are going to do the final finish. And we've said all along there'll be something going on with the, with the finish. Yes. Um, which we're not going to we're, we're gonna, not going to uh, we're not going to tell anybody yeah. what that is but it will go to podium before it's kind of official yeah. launch yeah. if you like for them to do the final phase and then then we're going to launch it at podium we'll we're going to have a, a launch party, party at podium I'll announce it well in advance so everyone can come yeah. uh, and we're going to try and get as many cool minis to come we'll get, get we'll some get icons, some of our ones Roads down there, there. Yeah. My, my, my van Frank yeah. that'll, that'll be there well I'll have to drive that there otherwise I'll be walking yeah yeah. Uh. so we're going to get some really cool minis along so <laughs> yeah. you must just stay tuned for that but um, mate it's so good to be back yeah <laughs> I've missed you man I know man it's been such a long time it's been so emotional <laughs> um, but yeah I hope you enjoyed that and, and just I, I, it's the fact the engine's in and it's running and, and that, that's been a real worry. It's been um, stressed. That it's one, been yeah. a, a big stress and the other, the, a lot of the delays just about uh, like in all industries at the moment, just getting time slots for people to be able to do stuff. And getting parts, parts arrivals have been a nightmare. If you order parts and they don't, it's, it reminds me so much when yeah. I built the bike in Cycle Sunday. We thought we'd have it in March and we ended up getting it in like October or yeah, something. Yeah, and we've, we've still got parts holdups across the board with yeah. everything. Manufacturers can't get materials to build their products and yeah. what have you. And so it's, yeah. it's, it's slowing us down a yeah. lot. And bits like this, we never imagined that we'd have the holdups we've had. Yeah. But we are over the the biggest bits of the hurdle now, yeah. really. It's, it's the final assembly, really, next. And that, yeah. that's the bit that I enjoy the most because it all comes together then. Yeah. We're not far away. But big thanks to 
all the guys that we're kind of working with on this. So yeah. uh, Miltech and Cobra everybody and, that's been involved for uh, been Michelin stunning. and yeah, you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the guys that are doing the paint, uh, all the guys them. we haven't talked about them yet. The guys that are going to be doing the trimming. Yeah. So there's all a lot of stars. there's a lot of partners that have helped this yeah. get this far. So hey, put in the comments below what do you think of Project PP so far. <laughs> it's looking wicked, mate. It's but getting there. See it will look time. very different on the next video because it will be built, built. You know, it will look I'll like a complete car. I'll hold into that. Anyway, promise. If you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrol Pet for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next video. Anyway, mate, you're gonna put the cat on. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs>